advanced test scores, students from Taiwan will be able to gain admission to any university on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. If one cannot get into National Taiwan University, one can get into Beijing University. If one cannot get into Tsinghua University in Qinzhou, one can get into Tsinghua University at Beijing. If one cannot get into the department of one's choice at National Zhenxi University, one will be able to at Fujian University in Shanghai. For students from Taiwan, this is mighty tempting. Okay, first of all, let me ask you. Uh, NTU and Beijing, that's uh, about right, right? NTU is our number one. Beijing is their number one, in a way. And then Tsinghua and Tsinghua. But I found something wrong with Zhengda and Fudan. What's wrong? Why Zhengda has to be compared not with a university in Beijing, but Shanghai? That's what you said. So what, what's the one that should match with NCCU, do you think? Which one? Which one should be the one that match with Zhengda? According to their ranking or specialized field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, probably Shanghai Telecom. No. Actually, there is one, uh, which is a sister school of my university. Renmin Dashu. How about this? Zhengzhi, we don't call National Political University. They don't call National People's University. They call Renmin. We call Zhengzhi. Hmm? And what else? Both are previously party school. Both, both really know how to party, but originally, Zhengzhi University is called Zhongyang Dangxiao from KMT. Okay? Renmin Daxue is from the Communist Party. So both have this political background. Okay? So Zhengzhi versus Renmin. Instead of political versus people. So now, and I told you before, right? When I went to Zhengzhi Renmin University for a visit and staying at what we call that building, Zhuan Jia Lou. Okay? That's how they call it, Zhuan Jia Lou. Right? And then I access the website. I could only access nccu.edu.tw. I cannot access anything like .gov.tw. Okay? Government, which uh, I cannot do it at Renmin University. I cannot access any uh, newspapers in Taiwan until in the evening when they screen out the United Daily News. Maybe I can read it. So these are the two. Okay. So uh, Beijing and NTU, and then uh, Tsinghua and Tsinghua. Oh, by the way, you're going to celebrate the centennial last next year, right? My wife asked me, like, are you still going to Tsinghua next year? I said, you know, I, I probably want to go because they are going to have a centennial, right? Then after centennial, I probably should start. Hmm? Or maybe 101. Who knows? 101 looks nice as well. 99 is good, right? Especially in Taiwan, everybody loves 99. Why? Long and long. Okay, I never realized this is a good number until I went to Hong Kong, right? Hong Kong, uh, su suddenly people told me my street number is the best number. I said, it's not 168. You know, 168, you understand, right? All the way, prosperity. Prosperity all the way, ilufa. Okay, or, you know, something with eight. My street number in the United States is 2929. How good is that? In Hong Kong, in Cantonese, it's called easily enough. Easily enough. Yi gao, yi gao. Rong yi go, rong yi go. Oh, so good. That number is so good. I never realized. You know, easily satisfied. Easily content. Huh? That's me. Uh, but 
here, our Tsinghua is going to be next year, 99, uh, 100, you're going to celebrate with the Communist Tsinghua University together? Is that what I read in the paper? Am I right? Huh? Okay, so you're going to be here, most of you, right? Some of you graduated already, saying, oh, maybe, <laughs> Professor Yan, why don't you just flunk me so I can stay one more year? Okay, let me know if you want to do that. Okay, uh, I just read a newspaper. One student, right, purposely didn't turn in the final, hoping to stay in the university for one more year. The professor couldn't find the paper, but said, That's, maybe I lost it, so gave the student an average, and he graduated. <laughs> okay, so let me know if you want to flunk the class, because, um, you know, your professor might be too benevolent to flunk you. So let me know. Okay, uh, to Tsinghua University and then Zhengzhi and then Fudan. Okay, so we have to learn a little bit of the. Uh, why so many this? Why so many this? My gosh. <laughs> what happened? Uh, some uh, higher education term, okay? That you need to know. Uh. Uh. Why, is the background? Why is the background Africa? <laughs> hey, what happened? Well, uh, you know, after the end of this semester, you will see the background will be my family. Okay, I'll put my family there next time. Okay, but this time I'm still using Africa. Now, how can I do this one? It won't listen to me. Okay, so we just have this more. Entrance examination, that was the O one one uh, we used, right? Uh, we used uh, the O one. one And uh, now we also have a lot of we call standardized tests uh, in examination. Now, uh, what's the benefit of uh, entrance examination and standardized tests? Hmm? Ms. Yan? Students save money applying for exams. Well, that's true. That's very true. You save a lot of application fee, right? No, I, I think I... Really? Yeah. No, standardized tests. I'm not sure. But examination, they could like, you know, drink no, so people, people, no, the purpose of not using entrance examination only is to prevent people to save time not to go to Bushiban. But you know, in Taiwan, people just believe in Bushiban. <laughs> right? Okay, so that's, uh, but here, uh, in terms of money, I think I would recommend Taiwan to do this. Uh, people ask me why you got your degree from Purdue University, which is a famous, uh, some of your professors uh, in engineering and science, uh, and also in business, which is not famous for, for political science. But do you know why I went to that university? Because there is no application fee. Okay, you know, I was a poor graduate student. Uh, and having, I think at the time when I applied, have one boy already and the second one on the way. Okay, so my wife gave me 100 US dollar to apply for my PhD program. Okay, uh, and I found those without the application fee. Okay, and find some really cheap one like $15, $10 at the time. So using $100, I think I applied eight or nine. I don't remember. But Purdue didn't require application fee. One thing in America, sometimes they said, uh, the application fee can be returned to you if you don't get admitted. I think this is what Taiwan should do. You know, you, you, you go through the process, and those who were admitted, they should pay the application fee. Those who didn't get in, then you should not. So that will save you money, right, Miss Yen? Yeah. But it's not like uh, 
logical because the application fee is what they pay for the administration process mm -hmm. to review your application. Yeah. Paperwork. So you are admitted or not, they still do your paperwork. Uh, but, but, you know, and you admit it, you go, the, the university is going to make a lot of money out of you, yeah. right? So they can compensate for those who are not coming <laughs> here, okay? Uh, but that's entrance examination, and uh, I think it's considered to be fair, okay? But the our problem with this is because there are people who have what we call test anxiety. You know, like they cannot take test. Uh, they're not good in taking tests. Uh, maybe uh, just like uh, Ms. Ling just mentioned about students in Taiwan, uh, not physically very strong nowadays. Uh, so uh, July 1st, taking exam without air condition. I'm not sure. I'm not sure every student can do it. Okay? But I'll give you one example of my friend who got a Chinese composition. 100%. Very difficult. Why? He took the ink and the brush. <laughs> okay. And, you know, make the ink there and use the Chinese brush to write his composition. Now, how many of the old professors reading this, you know, Maybe they will have tears. Anyway, it was so touched. Okay? So, uh, but if you require that, you know most of our kids in, in Taiwan, in the Grammar school, summertime, you know, calligraphy class, everybody is black, dark, you know, and you cannot read the articles, essays they wrote because it's all smooshed. Uh, so, uh, difficult. Some people have problem taking entrance examination. So that's the right reason we have an application now. Uh, we have, you know, this kind of recruiting uh, from the best high school if you qualify for certain so those are the terms application uh, always use the word application application fee of uh, recruiting uh, uh, sometimes people will say hey this is the best recruiting class we have for years okay recruiting you're looking at we call prospective candidate or student okay this is different remember from this perspective P E R, okay, S P E C. Prospect, you understand prospect, right? How many of you watch baseball? Okay, if you watch baseball, someone will say, hey, certain prospect, what does that mean? Yeah, having potential. It's in the single A, double A, or triple A, a prospect. Uh, sometimes you have what we call trade uh, of players. People will say, you know, trading a veteran for a prospect. Prospect is almost like gambling, right? You don't know whether it's good or not, but can be good. But a veteran is proven, but maybe too old now. You know, have only a few years left. So prospective students uh, to be recruited. Uh, so this is uh, some of the terms. Admission, you understand admission office. In Taiwan, what do we call admission office? Hmm? Zhao Shen Zhu. You know, this is a big, big office in the United States. They call vice president for admission. Fu Zhe, Zhao Shen the Fu Xiao Zhang. Uh, here we put in a jiao wu chu, xia men yi zhao sheng zhu, zhao sheng wei yuan hui. Okay, very small, but admission is big. Okay, now, conditional admission. Do we do that in Taiwan? Conditional admission? No? Have you ever been... Uh-huh. Yes? yes. Well, how, how conditional? I don't know, here in Taiwan, uh -huh. 
especially uh, here in Chingwa, especially for the Indian, uh -huh. they always have like conditional admission. I don't know. I don't know why. But, but, but how do they get out of the conditional admission? You, you need to satisfy the condition that they ask. You. Let's say that you uh, you didn't you have to present your uh, let's say your diploma for your previous school. But uh -huh. you didn't. If you get accepted, they will say like. Uh, uh, like unless you, uh -huh. you you get you give it to us, uh -huh. that, that time you will get accepted. Okay, so that's the condition. Do they ask you to saying you know like if the first year, uh, you have failed certain classes, then I have no. no okay, we uh, I used to have that you know in the United States because I shift my major, I change my major from English to history. I haven't taken any history classes before, so they said, uh, why don't you make up some history classes? Then after you finish those undergraduate classes, you can go on to the master degree programs. So how many classes did I make up? Eight classes, eight courses, 24 hours, plus my 36 hour, getting a master degree, 60 hours. Wow. <laughs> so I learned a lot of history. Okay, I can tell you that. Uh, but that's conditional admission. Okay, sometimes they do that. Uh, sometimes they also do certain things. For example, uh, in Taiwan right now, we have high school students right now already being admitted, right? Or being recruited to the college. Still, how many months left? Two months left. Already? Okay. So what happened, you know? Some students... <laughs> Now, you know, I'm an NTHU student. God, I'm going to have fun for the rest of the two months and didn't even take the final for the high school. Okay, in America, they found out this. They, they would take back your <laughs> admission. You know, found out, you know, because they gave the admission even earlier, by the end of last year, like December. Uh, you could, so some students said, well, you know, I got admitted. So the, the, the final semester, uh, why don't I just work at Starbucks, you know, getting some money, having party, make sure I get fit enough to go to the prom. Be a wit. That's the most important thing in my life, right? So they, they do that. So you have conditional admission now. Quota, okay, quota is sometimes university wanted. Okay, university, strangely, this is the place where you truly want diversity. University is a higher place, you know, learning place of higher learning, and it emphasizes diversity. Because if you don't, then you are recruiting based on the test. You have people from the same back background, and you don't know the outside world. Okay, uh, I think I mentioned this to you when I was at Zhengzhou University uh, as an administrator. I wanted my university to have quota or limited number of students from Zhongshan, Nuzhong. Anyone from Zhongshan here? Okay. Or Jingmei. I think Zhengzhi Dashi had too many of those two schools. Okay. And they have been classmates from elementary school all the way to college. <laughs> so you don't meet other people. You don't see friends. Like we have Taipei students. I remember when I was in college, didn't realize watermelon doesn't grow on a tree. <laughs> okay, the, the, when, only when you visit your friends from the south, you understand something outside. Okay, so they want diversity everywhere. The same thing, uh, different student backgrounds, uh, different professions. You know, family from different ethnic groups, different you know, culture. That's very important. Uh, and I think my kids got into university in the United States because of their strange background. Uh, my two boys were born, one in Texas, one in Indiana, and then, no, both were born in Texas. And then growing up, you know, little kid in Indiana, and then went to school in Alaska. Okay, Alaska is quite different, right? Alaska, you can see the moose and everything. So then returning to Taiwan for a few years of high school, and then go back. They officially, they, they, I think they, cons they are considered Alaska. You know, the American university, very, they want to make a check. Like, uh, we have recruited all 50 states, students from all 50 states. 
So my son said, hey, 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 I'm from Alaska. Oh, we don't have anyone from Alaska. Thank you, right, for letting us make the list complete. Huh? So that's how they, I think, how they got it, right? So in Taiwan, I think what do we need is we should have, you know, Tsinghua University student from at least all the 20-some counties and cities of Taiwan. I th- uh, Nianjiang Xian. So, hey, move our household to Nianjiang Xian, right? So we can have that. Uh, do you know Nianjiang Xian? Ma Zhu. Uh, we need to have some from Ma Zhu. Or Jingmen Penghu. You know, why don't we move there? Uh, so uh, diversity is important. And also affirmative action program, which Tsinghua is getting kind of that, your star program, a little bit like that. What is affirmative action? It's like you don't have enough of the minority groups represented. So what do you do? You say, I set aside a quota. I need certain percentage. So try to recruit them into your class. Okay? But this has uh, backfired sometimes because some school are fighting for the same students. Okay? Like good black student in America, like Obama before. I, but Obama is not very outstanding as a student. But still, people are willing to offer them scholarship to, 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 you know, to get them into the university. I'm sorry, the Asians are not very welcome in California anymore. Too many. You know, Asians are in you know, Stanford, Berkeley. Uh, so they said, uh, too many of you. We don't need, uh, other minorities all need affirmative action, but not Asians. Asians, too many there. Okay? So affirmative action. Uh, but some people said you should have equal, equality of opportunity. Okay? Means uh, you should base on credentials, you know, on ability instead of based on diversity, background. Uh, in Taiwan, what do we do? Uh, then we should say, well, uh, we need to have more people who came from maybe a uh, single parent background. Hmm? Uh, that's not well represented. Uh, we might want to have uh, students uh, from uh, par- mother of uh, foreign bride. Okay, so uh, we don't have enough of that. What else? Uh, we should have more people that uh, their parents uh, we call shellless snail. Uh, okay, so those are represented. That's diversity. <coughs> Otherwise, you know, all the students in Tsinghua think everybody live in Haozai. Right? So they were, you know, like, how come, you, how come you, you don't have air conditioning in your room? You don't have an individual television set in your room? You, you have to share with your parents? Hmm? So that's what we call diversity. Okay, you have to go out to the different places that you might have to go to the outdoor toilet, huh? not the taofang. Okay, so that's diversity. Like my son lived uh, at the University of Washington. His roommate is a miner's son, Kuang Gong de Erzi. Okay, uh, and my other son's roommate, I think it's also diversity, I use drugs. Right, you know, every society have student taking drugs, uh, okay, so, um, so that also help. No, I'm kidding, but you know, I don't think the university welcome drug, <laughs> drug it. Okay, uh, there uh, in the United States, you have in state tuition and out of state tuition. Uh, this is also being discussed in Taiwan about you know having Chinese coming to Taiwan uh, because we, our Education system is subsidized, right, by our government. So why the non-taxpayer from China should pay the same tuition? They, they, people say even they come to our public university, they should pay our private university tuition. Okay, so in state, out of state. Uh, America is even worse. That if you're not Texan, you say, hey, I'm from Texoma. Oh, that's Oklahoma. There is a city called Texoma. Okay, that's between Texas and Oklahoma. But if you're from Oklahoma, then you have to pay out of state tuition. Okay? So uh, when I went to the to Texas, I paid not out of state tuition, 
I didn't pay institution. I pay tuition for developing country. Thank God Taiwan was not very well developed at the time. Okay, so I pay uh, less than American citizen from another state. Okay, I paid one hundred and no two hundred and sixty three dollar one semester, fifteen hours. Okay, taking fifty credit fifteen credit hours, 十五个小十五个学分, I only paid two hundred and sixty three U.S. dollar. For one semester, then I got scholarship. I pay in state as in Texas. It was cheap. It's like one hundred and forty dollar, so not a lot. Okay. Uh, public, public, public university, and then I got scholarship most of the time. So I never pay more than two hundred dollar per semester. Okay, which is your pocket money, right nowadays? Uh, but uh, when my son went to a public university in the United States, paying. Out of state tuition, one semester exceed the nine years I paid altogether. <laughs> okay, so kind of like uh, going back to hit me, huh? Uh, so <laughs> there's another reverse: is private and public, uh, pub public university in Europe, in Asia are better. In the United States, private university. Are better, okay. At least more prestigious. Okay, so that's uh, the other difference. Okay, this is what we have for men and Chinese students. We have three restrictions and six notes, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, trying to you know regulate uh, this educational exchange. So let's go back to the article. Where is my? Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Xu, do you want to do it first? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Second paragraph. Okay, just a second. Yi Yuan Gui Ren. Oh, you're my Gui Ren. Yuan Gui. Chang Sha. The long saint. So first of all, Ms. Xi, have you heard about this? Using test score in Taiwan? Yeah, you can use that to apply. Okay, the US one, right? In fact, okay, Ms. Xi, if you want to apply for Ms. Xi, if you want to apply for university in the United States, right? Uh, what do you have to do? What do you have to have? First of all, you all, of course, you have to have some money. But uh, <laughs> what else? What do they What do they require? Hmm. Okay. So students. Uh. So your transcript, right? Okay, now, your transcript, don't you think that's something they also believe is not a test on your, for example, if you're a physics major, they didn't test you on physics, but they took your transcript from there, they evaluate. Okay, so also, of course, TOEFL, the English, and then GRE, but GRE didn't test a lot on physics. There is also GRE, I think, advanced, which is having the physics. But most of the uh, program don't ask for that. Still, so they trust your transcript. It's almost like tr the China trusting our testing score. 
Okay, I can tell you one thing. When I was in the U.S., the our university admission office understood that student from Tsinghua University, even though the average is 68, they know it's better than 85 or 86 from Chinese Culture University. Hmm? Okay, they, they know, they, they share information. They know Tsinghua is a better university. So even student average 68 is better, or 69 is better than Chinese Culture University average 96. Hmm? Oh. So that's why saying if they trust your evaluation system, they based on that. So the same thing on this test score. I think China trusts our test score. Okay? I don't think China trusts our individual high school scores. Or, you know, because uh, the parents can put a lot of pressure on the teacher, right? To give their kids high you know, good grade. In Taiwan we used to be able to do that. Why? You know, fine, I I let you pass. But you are not going to make it to the university. Doesn't matter. But nowadays the high school grades are so important. So everybody want to have grades, everybody want to be number one in class, everybody want to be the class leader. So in Taiwan what do we do? Uh, parents say, Okay, let's arrange. So everybody take turn, uh one for every one month, you know, so everyone later can say, Hey, I'm class leader for, you know, uh, August. Oh no, there's no August only one day, right? <laughs> uh, uh, September or something, right? So they trust our test score, okay? Uh, we can apply to mainland university using Taiwan test score. Uh, this is big. Uh, again, I'll give you my other experience. I graduated from Taiwan's university. I fell. I could not afford the American university, so I tried one university that without tuition, Australia. Okay? This was 30 some years ago. I applied for Australian University, but they said, oh, you know, but you're not part of the British Commonwealth. Huh? Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, they are part of the British Commonwealth. So they can go directly to their university. I have to be, we call, matriculated. Okay, so I have to go to their uh, university program. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, university. I cannot apply for graduate school. I have to go back to uh, start from the university. Okay, Singapore student, Hong Kong student can do it. I cannot. So they don't trust our transcript. They don't trust our education system. So China trusts our system, right? So next question for you, Ms. Shi. Do you think this will impact uh, something will not impact, but others think, think there are going to be a lot of students going to mainland China. Do you think that's the case? Which one is the case? Not impact universities in ta on, on Taiwan or may lead to a wave of students going to China in the next few years. You think that's the way? Because they cannot get into Jiao Da in Taiwan. So they say, hey, oh, I'm, I'm Jiao Da, Shanghai. I'm Jiao Da, Xi'an. Right? There are how many Jiao Da in China? Four, right? Okay. Like uh, earlier, one cannot get into Tsinghua in Xinzhu. One can get into Tsinghua in Beijing. So you think there will be more people going to China? You don't, you don't have faith in Taiwan? <laughs> now, maybe the parents. What do you think? It's the parent or the kids? Which one? Want to go to China? Maybe parents, huh? We don't know. Okay, but this is something, it's happening, so we're going, hey, hey, remember, you have a lot to write about. This is a good issue for you to write. Okay, Ke Sao Jun. Yeah, next one. Let's talk about some people's doubts and fears. If this policy takes effect and spread, every year as many as, as 10,000 students from Taiwan will choose to cross the Blackwater Beach. Hey, <laughs> Sui 
No, uh, academic. Academic. Uh huh. Study in mainland cities. This means that a significant proportion of young people from Taiwan would be transferred to the Chinese mainland. Since these stu students are the uh, academic elite, how should we interpret such a population movement? Okay, so. There are doubts there, and there are fears. Doubts is say, oh, so what? Uh, most people feel that uh, uh, you know, if you go to China, then you, you know, the cuisine will be a problem. Uh, our stomach really cannot survive in Sichuan, right, or Hunan. So mala. There are still people like. No, but the, but the problem, the reality is, you have so many Taiwanese businessmen, you can have Wami Sua in Chengdu, right? So who cares? Um, so that's not a big problem. So, but that's doubts. In, so they said 10,000. Right now it's about 2,000. Okay? But if the test score uh, is taken, maybe 10,000. Now, uh, first of all, Mr. Ke, do you know how many students we have right now? every year, like uh, taking our entrance examination? Uh, 15, okay, so let's say if 10,000 didn't go, then Taiwan's admission rate it's not just 100% or 105, it should be 120. Huh? So local people will be very happy, right? Like, oh, you know, I thought I had competition to get into you know, Taiwan's uh, university here, but those people went to China, so yeah, open up the door for me. Hmm? That's good for some students. Okay, but so 10,000. Uh, choose to cross the backwater ditch. Why is why using this? You understand the Chinese word "hei sui go." Why? Why? Why using black water ditch here? No, because of history. What is the history? This is where the. Mainlander first came to Taiwan, they said they have to cross this black water ditch uh, to come to Taiwan, which is not that safe. Mm? But they overcame the problems. Really? Because of our pollution? No. <laughs> Okay, but I think the reason I understand the, the but the reason we use the same thing is because centuries ago, right, the mainlander came to Taiwan, cross using the same term, Hei Sui Go. So it's ironic right now people are crossing back. Okay. Yeah, but but just you know the hi historical uh, connection here. Okay, black water ditch is the, the one, uh, the ancestor of Taiwan came across the black water ditch. And now you have the young people went over there. Okay, so here, uh, maybe a lot of people will be transferred. <laughs> transfer. Uh, I don't like the word transfer, but that's the word transfer. Okay, uh, transfer is big time. Uh, transfer student. Do we have that a lot here in Tsinghua? It's a big thing in Tsinghua. Transfer, like, uh, you know, zhuan xi de. Hmm? Inside? Like some student just wanted to make to Tsinghua, even though it's not the best uh, department, uh, best uh, discipline they want. Uh, my university, a lot of people got into Zhengzhi University. Major, Turkish language. Okay? But you are in Zhengda, right? So uh, next year, they got into like a international trade, accounting or something. 
But the funny thing is all this department, they said, uh, you can be a transfer student, but you have to do very well in your major. He said, the reason I want to transfer is I have no interest in my major. <laughs> huh? Isn't it ironic? They said, you have to be a good student in order to transfer out. But I have to prepare the transfer exam. So how can I be a good student on both ends? Okay. But so transfer a lot. And then transfer student from a different university taking the exam. How many of you from originally, from, not from Tsinghua? Yamil? No. Your university discriminate against transfer student. Uh, oh, oh, one. Okay. So. Okay, great. Just in way you go to Jing Lala. Okay. Call Chan Hirsen. Okay, that's even more difficult. How many students try? Sanka. Okay. So very difficult. Okay. Uh, so transfer student, but m my question here for Tsinghua is, how do you, how come you will have this vacancy open? Some of you transfer out to China, or, or drop out, or, uh, okay, okay, fail. Okay. You know, used to be in Taiwan, uh, the professors are so kind, because if they, uh, Flunk a student, and then if it's one half of the credit hours, they they have to go to the military service, especially for male student. They have no high school. You destroy his entire life. <laughs> okay. Nowadays, oh, we're so good in flunking student. You know, we said, wow, we flunk student from Tsinghua and from Zhengzhi University and all the private universities. Thank you, Professor Yan. Thank you for giving us so many transfer students. You know, all those private universities, they're looking for students, right? So all this uh, public university students flunk out, they are welcome in the private university. Okay? Sometimes the, the funny thing was the parents are very concerned. The kids are not concerned at all. You know, well, I have received phone calls from the parents that, you know, but the kids are fine, you know, fine with me. You know, I don't have to stay. Uh, so we help the private universities survive in Taiwan <laughs> by flunking our public university students. Okay? Uh, so here uh, would they, you know, uh, how do we interpret this population movement? Uh, so Mr. Ke, let me ask you, why would students go to China? Okay, give me one. Give me one. Well, see the aspect of ranking in the university. They got a better ranking. In the world. But but if you want a ranking, I can. We why don't we organize something in Taiwan to rank the Asian university and put NTHU number one, <laughs> huh? And then NCH uh, NCTU number two, huh? Can you? Taiwan also do a ranking. We put them. Worldwide, okay. So, so ranking. They are competition but, but I'm not sure. Do you think that's good? No, no, but I'm, I'm asking you. Do you think that's good? Coming you know, from the number one university in Asia, and you have to carry so much burden with you. you know, people will say, look, Mr. Ke is from the number one university in Asia. He must be very good. I have to, I have to live up to the expectation. Hmm? I must say there must be people like that. Okay, so those are people who do not care about their health. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from mediocre university, but um, I have no pressure on me. So that's good. Okay, but anyway, so that's a good reason. All right, ranking. Okay, Lin Xingnan. Zhuang Weixiang. Yeah, what's the other reason? Give me another reason. Going to China, yeah. Okay, so their parents have business. So what, but why, why do they have to go to China as well? Just uh, Parents say, you know, uh, I cannot afford to have you stay in Taiwan paying extra rent. 
right? So why don't you live here in China, you know, uh, and we have chauffeur, we have uh, maid to help you? Is that the parent cannot afford? No? What's the reason? The parent have business there, okay. But why would they want their kids to be educated in a stifled environment? Uh, not very free, right? Oh, think of this. The reason Taiwan's businessmen business are so successful in China because they, w they came from free societies. Right? So why would you want your kids to be freely educated? Perhaps they just want to have more family time. Oh, okay. Wow. I never realized our parents, huh? Taiwanese parents, want quality times with their kids. Really? I think maybe it's the mother said, Daughter, you might as well come to China because if you are in China, your father will feel embarrassed to have a mistress of your age. Okay, so that might be a reason. Okay. Uh, 无病友. okay. What's the other reason? Okay. We should go and see something so you want to hear something like "shiba," huh? Sure. Chang, 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 huh? So we have different culture. Okay, different culture. Okay, so diversity. Okay, I never realized diversity is so important in Taiwan. Okay, Tai Kuan Da. Yeah. What else? Oh, wait a second. It's, it's similar like the first okay, so, so, so. Because if you apply uh, for maybe a U.S. graduate school, and you say you're from Beijing uh -huh. University, mm -hmm. maybe, um, but maybe you are, you, uh, maybe like in Taiwan, you are in... Taipei NTU, University. NTU. 差不多, Taipei. Oh. <laughs> okay. Taipei University. Maybe NTU, but... Uh -huh. You are, you are the but best of the best in Taiwan. Uh -huh. You work so hard through uh -huh. all the tests. Uh -huh. You cram school uh -huh. pretty hard uh -huh. every night. Mm -hmm. but, but Americans or Europe, Europeans, they don't know what NTU. They, they don't know how... I, how I think hard NTU hard is good for. enough. Don't you think we spend so much money <laughs> on NTU? Maybe they haven't heard of an NCCU. Uh, or N Z Z U Z uh, almost like sleeping Z Z. Uh, <laughs> so they might not have heard of Zheng Zhi, but I think they have National Taiwan. I think you know that's good enough, right? So maybe um, they'll take it lower than. Okay. Maybe, okay. Uh, Beijing may be ranking Tokyo, higher. Tokyo so you think about further. Or 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 yeah. So you're thinking about graduate school, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe in the job market in the future. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, Wang Yikai. Yeah, what else? <coughs> Prospect. Different perspective. Mm. Why? Mm, maybe they have you said, I've been so free. I, I'm, a, I'm scared of freedom. I don't want freedom anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, I want to be structural. Or other resources. More more okay, more resources, maybe. Okay. Uh, I remember going to my sister university, Renmin, okay, in 2001. Uh, you look at the facilities, I said, wow, you know, much behind Taiwan, right? Behind us. And then in 2008, when I went there, I said, ooh, hey, it's a little bit embarrassed, right? Comparing the facility. I don't know about. Tsinghua and Beijing's Tsinghua right now. You know, sometimes I walk through the campus, hmm, the lovely smell from the sewage. I said, maybe, you know, it needs some improvement, okay? Just campus, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, different resources, okay? That's, uh, and besides, they also have a lot of uh, 
famous uh, professors from all, kind, all corners of the world. Uh, Chen Yijun. What else? Can you give me? I haven't heard anything said. Well, I want to go to Chongqing University because, you know, Chuan Wa Er, Zhen La. Huh? <laughs> no? You're not looking for the Chinese girls? No? Uh, no. You're not interested? Okay. <laughs> But what's the what other reasons? Uh, People might go to China for university. Mm. <coughs> okay, oh, that's that's uh, that's so 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 packaged word. Okay, the real world word, the real word. I think everywhere. You go to China, go to university here, is for GX, right? What is GX? Connection, right? You go to China, you go to, you, 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 you met someone we call the gains of the princess. What's the princess gain? Tai Zidang. Right? You meet all the of high you know the sons and daughters of the officials and you want the connection. And if you're doing business in China, you might want to know those people who might work with you or against you in the future. Know your friends, know the connection. I think you are closer to the job market which has the greatest potential maybe in the world in terms of growth. So those, I think, are the reasons. Uh -huh. uh, you, know, you might as well. And then, of course, I think we also have some people who really, truly love Taiwan, who want their kids to go to Chinese university to understand our enemies. <laughs> okay? So that in the future, they can help to protect Taiwan. Okay? So... Those are, I think, some of the reasons. If you can come up with other reasons, uh, help me. Uh, most of you are not, especially the boys, I don't think you are very honest with me. Hmm? Uh, because some of my former assistants who went to China uh, and then just uh, have very high difficulty uh, to be faithful to their girlfriends in Taiwan. Okay, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Uh, yeah, Hong Wei. Authoritarian? Preferential. Wind up. Bargaining chips. Chips. Okay. So uh, China can control the admission process. So I don't think they will recruit. We call Zhang Do or Jing Do, Jing Ro from Taiwan, right? They want to recruit someone, maybe uh, some important background in Taiwan as well. Or they can do uh, the other way, uh, but they want to. They probably can give scholarship. Uh, once they give you scholarship, I don't think you will reject. How many of you will reject? Saying, "Hey, you know, uh, Beijing University or uh, uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, give me, uh, let's say, two thousand or five thousand renminbi a month, it's, which is not a lot, twenty thousand." Okay, the same quality program like here. Do you think you will reject? Say, no, I, I love Taiwan so much, I cannot accept this. You know, I, I'm going to be on my own, right? So, uh, preferential, preferential, they will only give it to Taiwan. You say, oh, this is a propaganda, they're going to Tongzhan, <laughs> right? So what? 
you know, uh, whether you're going to be, you know, one over, or we call tong zhan, tong zhan, we call co-optation, right? Long luo, huh? Maybe you will be co-optated, but who care, right? So, and this will increase the temptation uh, for student from Taiwan to cross uh, the strait for higher learning. Your professor was offered a scholarship by University of Oklahoma. I didn't go. I went to Purdue University, which didn't offer me scholarship. You know, on my way to Purdue University to talk about scholarship, uh, they didn't offer me anything. They, they just felt, okay, uh, we're going to see you in a month. Uh, okay, you know, happy you talked to me, but we don't really don't have any money to give you. So, but I love Purdue so much. On my way back to Texas, on my way through Oklahoma, I said, hey, Oklahoma, I'm not coming. They said, but we are giving you scholarship. I didn't, you know why? Because I read the wrong uh, figures. I read the in-state tuition. Instead of out, out of state tuition, I thought, hey, maybe I can afford the in-state tuition, which I cannot. But on my way back to Taiwan, uh, to Texas, uh, Purdue called me and said, oh, you know, someone just uh, couldn't make it. So we're going to offer you. Hopefully, you're not going to Oklahoma. So I got a scholarship anyway. But I refused the, first, the Oklahoma one uh, earlier. But how many of, of you will, you know, read? Reject the scholarship. Huh? You will. You will. Uh, why? Because first of all, for that amount of money, you're not going to sell yourself to that <laughs> such a low bidder, right? No. Oh, this bid is too low. No, it's not enough for oh. a life in Beijing, frankly. 两万块不够，不够。生活费，住在学校宿舍里。Hey, you know, Beijing, come on, you go to eat in the cafeteria, it costs you about $10. But what happens if they give you a dorm? I still won't go. Okay. Because uh, if you live in the dorm, a meal costs you about Taiwanese dollar, $10 or $15 at the most, right? So it's not that bad. I, I remember I have, oh, it's a small it's 一什么一龙啊，大概台币十五块。Okay, so very cheap. Okay, not that bad. Okay, so you can be tempted, but then okay, the big question is, uh, all the student, young people from Taiwan, would they become bargaining chip? Means what? Yeah, because you have so many there, and they became uh Beijing's leverage against Taiwan. Okay. So that's why we worry. The answer is very simple. I don't think we have any confidence in our young people. Okay, okay let's take a break. Xiao Nai Xing. Yeah, next. Just a second, I cannot hear. What? You right paragraph, this sort? Yes. Okay. Am I right? This sort? Just a second, let me make sure. Yeah. This sort of negative? Okay. Can you start again? I'm sorry. Everything. Uh-huh. Okay, continue.
Okay, first question. Do you think this is being a negative attitude or just being cautious? Just being cautious. Okay, say, oh, we should not go and then to be brainwashed. Right? I think people worried at uh, Taiwanese. Oh, we are so innocent. We can be brainwashed by 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 all the Chinese communists. Uh, but here, okay. So that's. Uh, but at least in this article, says it's a negative thinking, because you have an assumption. Uh, everything must be to our disadvantage. Okay, this we're talking about student going to China, right? Now. I have also complained that I want to teach students from China in Taiwan, so I can brainwash them. Right? <laughs> but uh, why are why am I being deprived of such an opportunity to do that? But then reverse is also true. Don't you think you can also brainwash your professors in Beijing? No, you don't think so. No. Why not? The pr the the the. the Professors in Beijing will say, "Wow, student from Taiwan, so independent, so creative. They are so impressed." No, you don't think you can do that? Well, because uh, uh, I can tell you one thing: uh, some professors do not want to be challenged. Uh, so you know, for for the purpose of good grades, uh, you know, uh, you want to uh, believe whatever he said. Okay, so here. Uh, Conclusion always be that we must take every possible measure to confront and obstruct. What is obstruct? Hmm? Have you heard? Have you watched all the American legal film, legal dramas? You know, on the court they always say obstruction of justice. What is obstruction? Huh? You know, during a court, right? In a trial, you know, someone uh, doing something, you know, shouting, and then people will say obstruction of justice. Uh, like uh, when I was a legal translator in the United States, translating a case, and then I just laugh, and then the judge said I was trying to. You know, influence the jury. It was just funny. You know, can I just laugh? They said, "No, you are trying to influence the jury. Obstruction of justice. Po hui si fa, zhu wai si fa. Okay, obstruction. Uh, so that's the word people talk about. Someone being obstructionist. That's not a good word. Almost talking about uh, opposition for the sake of opposition. <coughs> 啊，反对，专门纯粹为反对 ，obstructionist. Okay. 呃、uh, ，then here, a、uh, positive view. Final result of will not necessarily manifest itself one or two generations. Okay. 呃、uh, ，we hope the two sides will fully understand each other during this two, one or two generation. That's your generation, and then. Understanding possible when people have free access to each other's social environment, educational environment, and lifestyle, so that we will not have a lot of misunderstanding. Right?、Uh, I'll give you one of these、uh, culture things. Okay.、Uh, in Taiwan, we. Begin to have a society that is more, I think, cautious. Okay, about strangers. <clears throat> so when I, my wife and I went to the United States, living in a small apartment, and then university apartment, then someone came to fix the apartment. You know, university has certain maintenance work to do, and they looked this young couple, saying, "Wow, you know, my wife. I think at the time was." Was pregnant? No, was she pregnant? Yes,、yeah, I think she was pregnant. Anyway,、uh, so they said, "Well, you know, next Thursday is our Thanksgiving. Why don't you join us?" They gave us their address. You know, they welcome you know student from far away to join their Thanksgiving. My wife said, 
hmm, this must be trying to get us away from our apartment so he can steal. So let me put all my jewelry, you know. So she carry all her jewelry with her so that nothing left in the apartment. Right? And we went there, and they are hosting, you know, they are having their family gathering and introduce us. And my wife was so embarrassed. You know, she didn't say about her thinking, but this is a culture thing. They would like to invite people to do this, but if you don't have that kind of exchange, and they say, why would you do it? And then found out some of them came to the Vietnam War, and they have certain understanding of Asia, uh, and some of their relatives also during World War II were in part of the U.S. Army. So uh, that's why. So you need to have some of this you know, social environment and educational environment and lifestyle to understand you know, uh, what other people are thinking, you know, why people think certain ways. Okay, if, for example, in China, uh, people work, students work very hard, you say, why? You know, why don't you enjoy your life? Because uh, coming out of the very remote, uh, you know, very poor area, that's the only ticket to success. So they have to work hard. So this is how we understand each other. And then only a generation grow in this environment will be able to, what's internalized? Hmm? Ms. Xiao, what is internalized? Internalized, it's, uh, in Chinese word uh, right now, it's called nei hua. What does that mean? It's almost like get used to, but also believe in yourself. You know, in the... For example, I think our former first family believe they didn't steal any money. Okay, they believe that, that, that money was donation, that money was for Taiwan's independence. Okay, you said, no, they cannot believe, but they already internalized that. Okay, so they already believe in that. Okay, so that's why we call internalized. Uh, and then also to resolve the problem, uh, the two sides faces. Next one, uh, Lin Ruofan. Relegated chorus. Shouting. Prosperity. Mm -hmm. Bilateral. Okay, now, my question here. Do you think the last sentence is correct? If university students do not have the confidence or, you know, uh, in cross traits exchange, then it will be more difficult than the other groups in our society?
Do you think that's correct? I mean, university students should, if they have no confidence in exchange with China, then other groups like workers, business people, will have even less confidence, or you know, uh, you know, or other public groups. This is the one I have trouble because I don't know whether that's true or not. For example, when I was in Renmin University or Beijing University, you know, in the campus, about five o'clock, five thirty, they break. You know, China is crazy, right? They have only one time zone, from Beijing, uh, from Manchuria all the way to Xinjiang, the same time zone. In America, they divide it into four time zone. So, which means. Chi Beijing already like five o'clock daylight, okay. <laughs> Xinjiang like nine o'clock, <laughs> okay. So very uh, very different. But you know, it's, it's uh, Xinjiang five o'clock. It's dark. It's only going to be nine o'clock when it becomes daylight. But Beijing five o'clock already students in the campus reciting English. They are studying. They are reading. They are doing very hard. You know, working very hard. I said, wait a second, five o'clock. In Taiwan, our student just finish their video game and uh, <laughs> go to bed, right? So, so of course they have less confidence. Like you know, are you crazy? You know, all the Chinese student uh, in the how many of you in Tsinghua have you seen Tsinghua student? You know, shouting to the tree like you know, reading like Obama speech. Do you have those students here? I'm I'm serious. I, I don't think we do that anymore, right? But in Beijing, you know, they're just crazy. You have students reading, in, you know, so early in the morning. Uh, so maybe you will have less confidence. I think the student will have less confidence. But not the people, not the business people, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure about this one, okay? At least saying if Taiwan set size like confidence in between university students, then the general public will even more so. Uh, which I'm not sure, okay? Especially some of our media people. I think our media people have more confidence than Chinese media, don't you think? Okay, our media are the, the one that you have a president speaking, they continue to talk, you know, over the cellular phone. They don't put it on mute. Oh, we the biggest paper. Uh, in China, I don't think they would do that. Right? Our, our media asking very, you know, uh, annoying questions. Okay? Uh, other, you know, in China would not do that. So, uh, I'm not sure this is the correct uh, way of saying that. But here, it's also coming back here, saying... Mere, what is mere? M I R E. You are trapped in a almost like a swamp. You know, do you understand swamp? You're being trapped there, you're trying to go up. The more you struggle, the further you sunk. Hmm? Okay, so you understand this mere. Zero sum, what is a zero sum? Like four plus minus four. That's zero sum. Right? Four plus minus four. Wow, such a such a big invention. Zero. Hmm? Four plus minus four equals zero. So that's what we call zero sum. So the total is zero uh, means what? Almost like whatever you gain, it must come at the loss of the other side, at the expense of the other. Okay, that's what we call zero sum. So, what is a non zero sum? A non zero sum may be they call win win situation, maybe four plus three. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's say uh, my angel would say, hey, Akfa is win-win, right? Yeah, yeah, of course he would say that, but that's how. So, non-zero, so he, he would say, oh, maybe we gain a little bit more, 
right? China gets three, we get four. But uh, we get four, uh, so that's a non-zero sum, okay? So here, zero sum game of hatred and confrontation. Uh, government on both sides manipulated, manipulate, use the cross-trade relation to their own political advantage, right? Uh, it's become a very popular uh, patriotic thing to do for both sides. I remember uh, during the Taiwan Strait crisis in 1995 and 1996, you know, Beijing, just like a month ago, they have this so-called Liaohui meeting, okay, National People's Congress. So you have some PLA generals sitting there, and then we have some stupid Taiwanese reporters, you know, interview them. What do you think of Li Denghui's visit to the United States? Oh, Taiwan get joshing. Da, da. Wow, okay. So, so patriotic, right? So that's what we call both sides are manipulating this patri patriotism or nationalism. Uh, but then the public on both sides, renegated means put on the back burner or back seat, right? To the role of an amen chorus. What is amen chorus? Hmm? Yeah. What is amen? Have you ever been to a church? You know, the pastor says something, everybody say amen, amen. Okay, but I can, I can agree with you. Amen means I agree with you. Okay, say hey, the Lord is good. Amen, fine. Yesterday, amen. I just mentioned yesterday, people just keep saying amen. You don't even know what I'm going to say. Huh? Just keep saying, you know, it's like, oh, whatever Professor Yen opened his mouth, you just say amen. Okay, that's what we call amen chorus. But what is a chorus? Hmm? You have to sing songs, chorus. Or also, especially, you repeat it a lot, right? So repeating amen. Okay, sometimes uh, in a church, a pastor will have, you know, like, anzhuang. Uh, Okay, like Amen Corner. Huh? Okay, whatever he said, they would say, Hey, Amen! Okay, there would be something. So it's almost like, you know, people in Taiwan, uh, whatever mind, you say, Hey, Amen! Amen to Akva. Okay, that's what we call Amen Chorus. Okay? So that's the public. Waving flags, uh, like America as well, very nationalist, so they waving. Flag by America. The flag of America is made in China. <laughs> right? So waving flag and shouting angry slogans. Right? Just uh I Taiwan. That's not angry. I don't think that's angry. Okay. Uh oh Ching Zhong. Is that angry? Uh, Mai Tai. Okay, Mai Tai. <laughs> Mai Tai, I, you know, first time I heard Mai Tai, I thought it's a cocktail. Mai Tai, Mai Tai. Huh? Do you know this cocktail, Mai Tai? It's a good cocktail, okay. Uh, anyway, here, if we believe the two sides of the Taiwan Strait have shared version of peace and mutual prosperity uh, increased bilateral exchange, so both sides, public, can guide the cross-strait relations, okay? Uh, so open exchange is good, okay? It's foregone conclusion. What does that mean? It's something you don't have to say no. You don't have to say doubt. You have no doubt. No reservation should be done, okay? Next one, Zhang uh, Zichuan. Okay. okay. Audacious. <coughs> Alternatives.
Okay, so here, uh, gesture by Beijing can be described as audacious. Uh, this is the same word uh, Obama used in his autobiography, or no, in his book, called uh, The Audacity of Hope. Uh, so what is audac audacity, audacious? Yeah, bold, okay. Uh, Beijing did not ask Taiwan to open, saying, you know, you don't have to do it to me, so which means no need for reciprocal okay, exchange. Okay. What is this reciprocal? How do we translate this? Reciprocal, uh, in return. Okay. And uh, in Nang, it's called reciprocity. Okay, everybody said, you know, like recipro reciprocity. You know, it's almost like, what would be the reciprocity for Taiwan to do? Oh, Beijing said, okay, you can take the, use the standard test to apply for Chinese university. So what would be the reciprocal thing for Taiwan to do? Wow. Well, okay. So, Nian Kao, maybe. <laughs> okay. So, you know, if you, you know, um, happen to be, you know, a certain level, we will also recognize that you can be admitted in Taiwan as well, right? So, we accept their uh, test scores. So, that's a reciprocal thing to do. But Beijing didn't ask that. And Taiwan need not take any additional exam. For example, they didn't ask us to take. Political 101, Political Science 101. Uh, okay, but you're going to be, uh, and then given that opportunity, maybe there are going to be more uh, people going there. Uh, so consider such an alternative. What do you mean by alternative? Which is an important word for Ma ying and Tsai ying debate on Sunday. What is alternative? Do you have an alternative? Hmm? Plan B, okay, it's a, like plan A, plan B, right? The second plan, okay? So it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's almost like you say, oh, uh, I'm going to my graduation dance party with Zhao Youting. People said, you, you really think he would go? Uh, do you have an alternative plan? Uh, you know, if he doesn't want to come with you. Uh, so that's uh, alternative. Okay, so alternative for ACFA is like, uh, if you don't want to have ACFA from the DPP point of view, what is your alternative, right? So let us know. Uh, and moreover, uh, Beijing opened the door uh, uh, once the, you know, it is open. Can Taiwan say, hey, 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 you know, we lost so many good students to you. Please shut down the door. You know, you cannot admit Taiwan students. Huh? We cannot do that. So uh, out of Taipei's hand, and then uh, we, from our perspective, we must uh, adopt a different kind of uh, uh, posture of also great open, greater openness. Otherwise, uh, a posture. Posture is almost like a, a state of what? Pass passivity. What is passivity? Passivity. Pass. Not doing anything. Not you know. Not very active. You are passive. Right? Yeah. Okay. Finally, we have Guo Junyi. Is that right? Dan Zhu Wei. Gesture by Beijing will make it even more difficult for Taiwan to reject Maryland Academy credentials and to prohibit Maryland students from studying on, in Taiwan. I think it's there on Taiwan. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Even under the current system, 2,000 uh, students from Taiwan went to the mailing to study. Now that certain uh, students from Taiwan can gain admission, Solely.
crucial to recognize Lehman Academy credential will be both invisible and fruitless. The students from Taiwan are studying on the mainland, but students from the mainland are prohibited from studying on ta in Taiwan. Such a lopsided situation will only disadvantage Taiwan. Okay, so more difficult for Taiwan to reject uh, this recognition of our standard test. Uh, Mainland academic credential and to prohibit, uh, to reject mainland saying, oh, Beijing, I'm sorry, we don't recognize Beijing University diploma. And the rest of the world all did, right? Except in Taipei. Uh -huh. And then uh, we prohibit Beijing student or mainland student from studying in Taiwan. Uh, it would be difficult. You know, they accept us. Why can we accept their students? Uh, and now we have about 2,000 every year. And then uh, maybe we will have more, okay, once uh, they look at our score. And especially preferential treatment. What do you mean by preferential treatment here? It's almost like uh, in Taipei, I probably can get not to the best university. But if I can get to the best university from in China, it, you know, if I consider it's moving up, that's preferential. Okay, that's preferential enough, right? So here, so to boot their ranks means to increase the number of Taiwan students going to China. Uh, so mainland credential will be infeasible. What do you mean by feasible here? Infeasible. To reject, not to recognize. Hmm? Something that, you can, can, that can be done. This is not like uh, un infeasible. It's something that cannot cannot be carried out. Almost, uh, we, we us usually people have plan, you know, a business plan. People will say, why don't you do a feasibility study? 可实用性, okay, 可行性. So uh, whether it can be carried out or not. So infeasible, okay, uh, and pointless. Okay? Uh, which means in Taiwan, everyone else recognize the degree. And you don't recognize it, that's not good. That's not, you know, and pointless. That's no meaning at all. And here, also, if a student from Taiwan studying mainland China, and a student from mainland are prohibited here, uh, this is also to the disadvantage of Taiwan. Okay, I can also give you one example. Remember last class I said I didn't go to Australia? You know, the reason why I didn't go to Australia, because Australian consulate in Hong Kong is even I was even willing to go to the university to make up two years in order to go to the graduate school but Australia said we we don't rec we don't know how good is your English but we don't recognize TOEFL that's American thing you know Australian we have other things so they said you have to come to take an English test so I went to Hong Kong to take an English test and I went to the consulate and they took me to the office in the back, and then they came out with a record, you know, 45 LP. Right, they put on, I listened, listening comprehension, ooh, listen, hmm, write the answer. And then I write an essay. Okay, a few months later, they said, oh, your English is okay, so you can apply. So I applied to university and got admission. And then once I got admission, which oh, Australians are very crazy. The school started in January. I got admission in February. Okay, already late. I mean, maybe the... <laughs> and then I said, oh, I need to go there. So I went to Hong Kong to get my visa. And the Australian consulate looked at me saying, you, haven't, you didn't make an appointment. I said, okay. So how could I make an appointment? Oh, maybe in April. <laughs> okay. So I didn't go, okay? I went to the United States. And when I came back to Taiwan, I talked to the Australian diplomats about this. They said, oh, we were so stupid. That's the reason why we cannot be very competitive here in Taiwan, in the government, in business community. Why Taiwan is so pro-America? Maybe it's because America provides opportunity of education for a lot of Taiwanese. And Europeans, Great Britain, finally said, oh, no wonder we have contract that, you know, bidding contract, we cannot compete. We have very few, you know, British graduate before. Now they started about 1990. Australia, 
Canada, New Zealand, everybody is competing for the talent. Okay? So if you want to influence that country, you better educate that country's elite. So if you want to educate or uh, influence Chinese thinking elite, you better educate them. Okay? So that's why I, I believe we should do that. Okay? Otherwise, it will be to our disadvantages. Okay? Uh, Ong Yingzi. Germinate. Okay, so germinate means also means growth, you know, coming out of this, bring up uh, on university campus. Uh, basically, all this, you know, this is from a Taiwan's editorial, right? Translated into English. So what can I call this? I call this all this BS. You understand BS? Uh, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> right. Brainstorming. Okay, brainstorming. Okay, what what else is BS, Miss Ong? I don't want to. Something with a a sheet of paper, huh? Okay. So um, there is no need to explain this part. But I I, I really think uh, there is nothing to be afraid. Uh, and so what if they want to? Uh, have preferential treatment to Taiwan, fine. Uh, Ms. Ong, why can't we accept this? Why can't we accept some preferential treatment from China? You, you think our people will be won over because of that, you know, like Ms. Yin said, that, that little money doesn't make any sense. Okay. But I, I think th the reasons why we can do this is because we have in a group of people in Taiwan who believe in Taiwan independence. So we, China, you know, is like, it's totally lost right now. China said, we're doing great economically. We're becoming world-class power. How come Taiwan is not interested in unification? So they have to do more and more. And Taiwan just say, oh, you know, I'm not sure I want to be unified. What else do you want? Okay. They just keep giving us a lot of things. And then people say, no, don't take anything because if you take something, then you will have to marry this guy. Right? <laughs> but if you marry him, he will not give you anything. So before marriage, just pretend I'm still interested. You'll get a lot. Right? And once you, you know, prosper, you get prosper, you, you enrich yourself, you're strong enough, maybe you can s slip away. Who knows? But right now you're so weak, you know, you're not physically strong enough to get away. So might as well get some of the you know, nutrition from China. Who cares? Right? Okay, so we'll stop here and then look at the other two articles. And you uh, have that uh, six notes. And what, think about that one. Do you think that's also, you know, reasonable to have those three restrictions and six notes uh, here? Okay, the restriction. Uh, for example, we don't want anyone to go to China to study Chinese medicine. Why? Because 北大中医, 台中中医, maybe I think the 台中中医 God bless patients, huh? because people say, oh, Zhong Guo Yi Xue must be from Zhong Guo. <laughs> so that's why people say certain programs cannot do that. Okay, see you next week.